Hello everyone and welcome. We are so glad to have you join us today for our webinar on IT architecture for non-architects. I'm Kathy Vasquez. I'm with Max Technical Training and I'm going to be your moderator today. I have a 30 second commercial for you. You just have to bear with me. I want to let you know that today's Lunch and Learn is brought to you by Max Technical Training, a premier provider of software and professional skills education for IT and business professionals. Maxis delivers training in top technologies and methodologies for over 18 years. Clients prefer Max because our trainers are highly qualified experts. As you'll note today, um, in today's webinar, Mike is also. Um, our, our instructors help clients solve real problems as part of the typical classroom experience. In addition to providing standard off-the-shelf training, Max delivers and develops modified and customized curriculum, and we also deliver training privately on the client site. We provide that extra boost to transform training into action for clients who need it with mentoring, coaching, and consulting on site. We're just about ready to start, so just a few housekeeping tips. Mike is going to be presenting for about 45 minutes and he is open to taking questions throughout the presentation. So you can just type it in the question section found on your GoToWebinar doc. If there are some questions that he's not able to get to, he will answer them at the end. If you have any comments or issues that you would like to share with us, you can do that by using the chat section. We do have an IT technical lead with us, Brandon, so if you have any technical issues, type those into the chat section and Brandon will help you. We are recording this webinar and we'll email a link to the recording and the slide deck to you later today. And now I'm pleased to introduce you to Mike Fulton. He's president of CC&C Solutions, America's division. A little about CC&C Solutions, they are a global enterprise architecture consultancy with close ties to the Open Group and TOGAP, the Open Group's architecture framework. Mike is an experienced architect with over eight years of experience in enterprise architecture and over 20 in IT experience altogether. He is TOGAF certified and a cloud certified architect. Mike has also led IT for IT architecture, cloud architecture, IT strategic planning, disruptive cost innovation, IT leadership development, and EA capability and training development at a, a local Fortune 50 company. Experience working across the entire IT life cycle, including time and service management, program management, project management, application development, and IT operations. So I want to welcome Mike. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Kathy, for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, and for those out there in the audience, um, I will apologize. I noticed uh, that there is a little bit of lag uh, over the uh, webinar. Uh, for the slides. I will try to um, uh, pay attention and, and uh, watch for that as best I can, but if uh, I am speaking a little bit ahead of the slides, I will apologize uh, up front for that. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, architecture for the non-architects. So coming into this, my assumption uh, is that you probably don't know a tremendous amount about our enterprise architecture or architecture in general, so we're going to talk you through uh, through that a little bit and uh, give you a little bit of the, the value of enterprise architecture uh, to, to you and your companies and the context um, of enterprise architecture within your company and uh, give you some ways that you could potentially learn, learn more. So to start with, um, the, the first thing that we always uh, want to ground people in when we talk about enterprise architecture is, is a definition. What is enterprise architecture? Um, for us, when we talk about enterprise architecture, we are talking about uh, the organization within an IT department typically, not always, but typically within an IT department that produces the plan, uh, the overarching plan that brings together uh, business processes, information, uh, applications, and technology uh, inside of a company talks about how those are all going to be used and how it talks about how you're going to share those and reuse those uh, across different business units within a company. Um, as you can see on screen, we've got a, a visual here. Um, when we talk about enterprise architecture, we focus on four domains uh, typically. Um, you'll, you'll see that we've got business architecture, which typically consists of business processes, business services, the organizations, the people, the business model of, of an organization. 
Uh, we've got data architecture, which consists of the information flows uh, of the organization, the key performance indicators, the, the data, uh, the actual detailed data, and it also covers the uh, life cycle of data and the management of data. Then we'll get into application architecture, uh, that third domain where we talk about um, the applications of the company, the, the, the IT services that are used uh, to, to basically combine into what the end user will see and interact with uh, from an application perspective. And then underlying all of that, uh, we talk about technology architecture, and that's the, the hardware, the software, the network, um, all the different components that are used to support and build up into um, the, the other layers, the other domains uh, of our enterprise architecture. Now, when we, uh, when we try to understand this concept, obviously it's a, it's a broad concept. The simplest way to think about enterprise architecture is really uh, enterprise architecture is city planning for IT. Okay, it is not. Um, it is not actually the uh, the architecture of the buildings, or as we like to call them in uh, in IT, the applications. Um, that's a different concept called solution architecture, which does um, come in under the entire uh, architecture picture. It's a continuum, so. The solution architecture is the work to design the buildings, and then the enterprise work architecture is the work to actually lay out the city plan for the organization. Um, so, as you can see here in the picture, you've got um, you've got the uh, the infrastructure, the underlying pipes, the roads that help you get from house to house. You have the neighborhoods. Uh, you have the public utilities, uh, the things that all of the um, all of the houses within a neighborhood actually take advantage of, uh, and you'll see that there's a there's some zoning. There's um, houses that look similar uh, are in the same neighborhood, uh, so that you don't have um, a lot of uh, you've got some consistency uh, to your organization. You've got residential areas, you've got commercial areas, etc. So it's it's a similar concept. So if we if we play out the analogy. Um, what we'll see is that uh, the business architecture domain uh, really is analogous to the city layout. So how the people actually go through the city to, to get their business done is, is very similar to the business processes that a business uses to meet its goals. Right? The applications are similar to the buildings. Right? So the buildings are where, where you actually uh, live and breathe where you actually real life actually takes place um, in in our IT context the, the the applications are where people are actually doing the work right they're they're using the applications to perform their business processes typically um, when we talk about data data is um, how um, if we compare that we compare that back to to the utilities in a city planning sense so how is electricity, how is water getting between the various buildings. Um, and, and so that's the same as the data uh, in an enterprise. Uh, how is that getting organized? How is it getting processed? How is it getting used in the applications? And then technology is, is the basis. That's the building block for all the different things that we need to do to deliver everything above. And it's the same, um, it's the same in the city planning context. The technology here is the construction components. It's the wood, it's the brick, it's the, the metal pipes, it's all the different things that you need to bring together to actually uh, to build the, the buildings and to, to create the utilities and move the utilities and everything else. So the technology are those building blocks to deliver everything else. Now when we talk about um, enterprise architecture, what we like to do is, is make sure it's rooted in value back to the organization. And so, um, so there, was a, there was actually a Harvard Business Press research study that was done that really pointed to um, the value of enterprise architecture. And it leads to higher, profit, higher profitability levels for companies. Uh, it allows for faster time to market. And it really drives um, higher levels of value out of the IT investments. And so you can see some of the, 
the numbers that came out of that study. Uh, the study is a little bit old, but what I would say to you in that regard is that um, as the importance of information technology uh, increases uh, in, in today's world, uh, different than it was 10 years ago, I would say the importance of enterprise architecture it is only increasing. Uh, enterprise architecture really adds the most value when you have uh, the most complexity in your organizations, in the technology landscapes of your organizations. And so as our world gets more and more complex, uh, as we move faster and faster, enterprise architecture is, is more value to, valuable to companies because it enables us to be able to keep, um, keep that in control, uh, to be able to have a better sense of where we're heading and, um, and really drive the most value out of our investments. Now, if we think about um, enterprise architecture, um, we, we talk about the, uh, the role of an enterprise architect. And, and when we talk about the role of an enterprise architect, there really are five things that um, an enterprise architecture needs to, to focus on and, and skills that an enterprise architect really needs to, to build. Uh, and those are the ability to strategize, uh, to really work with the business and understand the business strategies, be able to articulate those business strategies back, and translate those business strategies into an IT strategy uh, that can be then, um, then worked with. Um, th th we need the ability to architect. Uh, when we talk about architecture uh, in this context and, and architecting, we're talking about documenting a current state, developing a future state, figuring out the gaps between uh, the current and the future state and developing a roadmap to help us deliver and close those gaps. Basically, what we talk about here, Gartner, when, when Gartner talks about this now, they talk about architecture being the link between strategy and, and execution. Um, architecture is the development of the executable plan for delivering uh, your strategy. And so that's really what fits into that red block there. But in addition to, to strategy, strategizing and, and architecting, which are things that are typically thought of as being uh, in the architecture scope, you also need to govern. So um, as we set our architecture, we set our plan forward, we need to make sure that the organization is adhering to that plan, that the projects as they get delivered don't get off track, um, and that if they do get off track for good reason, uh, technology changes, business needs change, that we make adjustments to our architecture in response to that. So we need to, to govern uh, in partnership with the projects of an organization to make sure that, um, that we're delivering against expectations. And then the, the last two, uh, these really are, 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 are critical to the process. Uh, architects have a leadership role within the organization. It's important for um, your architects to be visible. Uh, it's important for your architects to be out there and, and championing, championing for the organization. Um, we want to um, develop others. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that uh, your enterprise architects tend to be some of your more senior people in the organization. They tend to be some of um, some of the the um, the folks that really know what's going on in the organization the best. Sometimes they tend to be the, mo the best connectors in an organization. And so it's important for our architects to, um, to be out there with the organization playing a leadership role. And part of that really comes into that, that last point, communicate. Um, our architects have to be good communicators. Um, if you, you as an architect are not uh, communicating properly, uh, to your organization, then you're, you're never going to be uh, successful. And so, um, again, strategize, architect, uh, burn and lead, and communicate. Um, this, is a, this is a fun job. The job of an architect, the job of an enterprise architect is a, f a fun job. It's a cool job. You get to do 
all sorts of wonderful, cool things. You get to shape business strategies for your company. You get to lead innovation. You get to design very creative solutions. You get to work with lots and lots of people and see lots of interesting things. It's hard work, though. It's not. Uh, it's not something that's necessarily for everyone. Um, so you have to, to really uh, take a look at yourself and see is this the kind of work that you like to do um, and, and some people really will love this. Other people uh, may prefer to do uh, other kinds of work and so you have to do that kind of self-reflection as you, as you look at whether or not uh, an architecture role is for you. Now I think, um, Kathy, if I'm, I, I, I apologize here, but if you can uh, help me, I think I, um, I think I skipped over our first poll question, no um, and I think our second poll question is uh, here in in another two slides. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. What you, what would you like to do? Um, so we'll go ahead and forget the first poll question. I'll do the um, the one more slide, and then we'll 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 come back into our second poll question and get get folks uh, engaged a little bit. Very good. All right. So um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about uh, real briefly here is um, the, the five activities of enterprise architecture. Um, and, and we talked a little bit about uh, this uh, on the last slide when we talked about uh, a couple of the pieces. But what you'll see here on screen is there's, there's really um, three different levels of architecture that happens. Okay. The first one is an enterprise level architecture. That's the biggest, broadest, highest level um, architecture that you do within a company. That's the, the, the big picture. Um, a segment level architecture really is taking a vertical slice within an organization, drilling down to a, a lower level of, of detail, uh, typically a line of business level. Um, and a solution level architecture um, is the, the lowest level, typically at a project level or a, a process level. Um, so you do different kinds of architecture um, and, and as an enterprise architect, as an IT architect, you may be involved in any one uh, of those three different levels of architecture and we'll talk a little bit more about them uh, here in our next slide. Um, and then you're also involved with enterprise architecture governance. So it's important that um, you're, as we talked on the last slide, um, connecting with the rest of the organization, partnering with the project teams that are actually building solutions, uh, and you're helping to make sure that your architectures are being implemented um, in the right way to, to meet the needs of the organization, and that your architectures are fit for purpose, that, um, that they're going to deliver the value that you need for the organization. So you need to adjust them uh, as new learnings come out in the projects. And then the last thing that's a, a key critical activity, just like uh, with every other business capability of the organization, it's important that we manage the enterprise architecture organization, the enterprise architecture team um, as a business capability. We want to continuously drive um, progress. We want to get better. Um, and, and so we want to be very intentional, intentional about managing the maturity of our enterprise architecture practice. All right. So, and then I think the I, I think the uh, the poll question, if I remember right, actually comes in after this uh, this slide. So, just to kind of finalize the the discussion here before we hit the poll question, uh, there are three uh, levels of architecture. We mentioned them uh, just a minute ago: enterprise, segment, and solution architecture. If we talk about the enterprise architecture, we're really talking about organization-wide. It's uh, really focused in on the most strategic outcomes of the company. Uh, it's intended to really be something that um, is, is usable by all the stakeholders of an organization. Typically, you're not going to have a high level of detail here because the scope is very big, very broad. Okay? The segment architecture is going to be uh, really focused in on a line of business or um, a business function, uh, maybe something like human resources or the finance departments or um, um, the, the sales and marketing uh, organization. So you're really narrowing down that scope. Your level of detail, you're getting, uh, you're getting more granular. 
you're getting more detailed in the architectures that you're putting together. And here you're really starting to dig in and focus in on how are we delivering those key business outcomes? How are we improving the key performance indicators that we've identified for the business processes of this particular line of business? So for our segment architectures, you really want to work very closely with the business owners of that part of the organization, uh, working hand in hand with them to deliver um, plans to get to the business outcomes that they're looking for. And that last level, that solution architecture level, this is where you're at the, the lowest level of detail. You're on a project team, you're working specifically within a, a department or within a, a function uh, or focusing in on a specific process, maybe a single application or a couple of applications. You are really putting down a, a fairly um, high level of detail. Um, very robust documentation, uh, and you're you're really focusing in on how is this uh, um, this solution design that we're putting together going to deliver the operational outcomes on a day in and day out basis. Here, you're really focused in on the end users of the system that you're putting in place. Uh, you're focused in on providing the right level of detail for developers that have to pick up this architecture and turn around and implement it uh, in package software, in code, in business transformations. Okay. So with that, let's um, let's take a minute and see if um, I hit the poll question right. So Kathy, let me turn that over to you. All right, here you go. Here's your poll. Everybody get your votes in, please. We've got people voting now. We've got 25% uh, of 30. It's going quickly now. We'll hold, the, we'll hold it open for another 15 seconds. Fifty-three. Come on, guys. You can do better. We have 53% have voted. <laughs> Which of the following is not an EA framework? Get your vote in. All right, five more seconds, and then I close the poll. Mike, we got 60% have voted. All right, let's and see. Uh, we have, let's share the results here. Looks like some people just weren't sure. All right, so we haven't talked this today, so it's okay that, uh, that, that you, uh, you didn't know the, the answer here. Um, but... I'll walk you through the answer. What we're, what we're asking here is uh, really about enterprise architecture frameworks that are used to, to actually do the development of, of enterprise architecture. And so um, when we talk about that, and I'll actually, I think I might have missed on the slides here because I think we do have a couple of slides talking this in a, in a minute. Um, the most common, commonly used, widely known enterprise architecture framework is TOGAF. It's the Open Group Architecture Framework. It is an open standard for the development of enterprise architecture. Uh, it's also a series of best practices for delivering enterprise architecture. Uh, there are about 50,000 people in the world that are TOGAF certified. Um, we do uh, here at Max teach a TOGAF certification course. Um, so that's the, the first, uh, first one there. That is, is an architecture framework. DODAF is the uh, Department of Defense Architecture Framework, okay? Um, and then the, the next one is um, FIAF. FIAF is the Federal Enterprise Architecture Framework. Um, both of those are also architecture frameworks. Um, you can see 50% of the people chose one of those as not being a framework, but it's, it's important to note here that there are actually two industries where enterprise architecture is, is actually mandated by law. Um, the first one is government. Um, in, at least here in the United States, um, it is mandated by law that the government have an enterprise architecture. Um, and then the other industry um, is really the banking industry. So there are laws and regulations that say if you are a bank, you have to have uh, an enterprise architecture for your uh, IT landscape. Um, and that's, that's to help ensure that the right strategic planning, the right thought is going into the systems that people are putting out there to, to run our government, to, to, to actually 
um, manage our money. So those are uh, the two industries where that's uh, actually mandated by law. Now what you'll see, they don't, um, I believe actually for, for governments, they, they actually use the words enterprise architecture. Um, in the banking industry, um, they, they don't uh, actually use the words enterprise architecture in the regulations. They say you need to have a strategic plan and a roadmap for the implementation of technology into your IT landscape, um, which as we have seen and talked about is more or less the definition of enterprise architecture. So, so it looks like 17% of our respondents got it right, but which 17%? PF or MIAF? <laughs> Great it? question. So uh, PF is the pragmatic enterprise architecture framework. Um, and uh, so that is an actual enterprise architecture framework that was in res that was actually developed in response to um, kind of some of the things going on in the industry where uh, basically our IT industry, you, you've probably felt it if you've been in the industry for any period of time, things seem to be getting faster and faster and faster. And so as, as people have looked at enterprise architecture um, and some of the, the more historic enterprise architecture frameworks, they felt challenged by the, the, the time investment uh, in enterprise architecture. And so uh, there was a gentleman that put together this pragmatic enterprise architecture framework trying to focus in on the most important items um, that, um, that you need to do, deliver when you're doing enterprise architecture so that you could do those more quickly. Uh, that has not got a lot of traction in the industry. Uh, there are some people that uh, that do follow it and, and use it, um, but it's it's not very widely used uh, today. Simply because it isn't, uh, it's a little tough to follow and it's not um, as comprehensive as as it needs to be. So the correct answer here is MIAF. Uh, I just made me uh, my architecture framework up uh, as as the last answer. So. There is no enterprise architecture framework called MIAF. Very good. All right, so if we can switch back to presenter view. Okay, looks like we're back on screen. So let's um let's talk a little bit about um an enterprise architecture career path. So um, when we uh, when we talk about a typical enterprise architecture career path, typically um, it takes a while to to become an enterprise architect. Um, you typically are going to spend some time in application development or in IT operations. Um, you're going to learn um, how to how to to actually build and run uh, applications. Uh, and then you'll become a, a technology lead. You'll grow into a, a team lead, a project leader role. You'll you'll get some additional experience in the organization. Um, you you may uh, you may start to look at some of the the broader uh, sorts of things, focusing in on uh, business analysis. You may focus in on more of the infrastructure technology pieces. Um, but you're you're building up your skills over time. And then you get into either an infrastructure architect, a technology architect, or a solution architect. Um, and so this is this is when you've been kind of in IT. You've had a you've had a chance to see some things, learn some things, start to really get into what's going on. Um, and you, so you've been here five to five to eight years, and now you move into a solution architect role. Um, Typically, what we see is is folks will stay in that solution architect role, building out architectures for projects or for applications or solutions. Uh, maybe maybe doing some technology specific architecture work uh, for a, an extended period of time, anywhere for up to to five years before they actually will grow into a segment or a domain architect role. And that's really the point where you're starting to do more of what we consider to be enterprise architecture. Uh, you're looking at the bigger, broader um, picture and, and really trying to, to get more close to the business outcomes and trying to um, set more of the strategy. Um, it's important to understand here that enterprise architecture is not something that you just jump into as a new hire. Um, it takes 
uh, a number of years of experience in, in IT and working with the business. Uh, it takes some, it takes some uh, understanding of an organization um, and of organizational dynamics to be a good architect and so it takes um, it takes a while to, to really build yourself up into this. It's it is a it's a nice natural um, career growth that, that happens to become an enterprise architect. Uh, enterprise architects have to understand the broad IT landscape of an organization um, or the broad business landscape of an organization. And so you you need to have been around, you need to have seen some things uh, really understand how an organization works, how an IT landscape works to be an effective enterprise architect. You really have to be able to, to talk um, very, uh, very intelligently to the most technical people in the company and at the same time be able to talk very eloquently with um, the most knowledgeable business people in the company. And so it, it is a role that um, can be um, difficult to do and does take some time to grow into. Now as I mentioned earlier we talked a little bit about uh, TOGAF um, that is the open group architecture framework. Um, there are lots of companies around the world that, that use TOGAF um, on a regular basis and that have helped to contribute to this open industry standard. Um, it's important to understand um, what TOGAF is just a little bit um, because uh, there's a lot of folks in, in the industry that don't really understand it. TOGAF actually is um, uh, six different components. Um, the most important component of TOGAF is the TOGAF Architecture Development Method or ADM. This is simply um, a process for doing architecture. Okay. Now, uh, the other components of TOGAF, I'll run through some of those really quickly. Um, the other components of TOGAF include um, a, an architecture content framework, uh, a structure for how you're going to um, define the content uh, that you'll develop about your architecture. Um, it includes um, uh, some best practices, some guidelines and techniques that you can take uh, advantage of. Um, it includes an architecture skills framework, um, so some, some information about the, the skills and capabilities that you need for your architects. Um, it includes some architecture reference models. Okay? So um, it's important to understand that all those things are there. Basically what, what you've got in TOGAF is, is a, a 700 pages of a specification uh, of a toolbox um, that you can pick and choose and, and use within your organization uh, as you see fit. You don't have to use uh, all of, of uh, TOGAF to, to really benefit your company. The TOGAF ADM is the part that is fairly uh, unique and used pretty broadly um, across the industry and it is really that iterative process for actually building out your architectures. Okay? And you'll scope uh, an architecture iteration so that within each piece of work you do as, as an architect, you're, de you're clearly delivering business value in a short, uh, rapid time frame uh, to, to continue to move the organization forward. Now we'll focus in just a, just a second on TOGAF certification training. Um, and we do that because that's one of the things that we offer here at Max is TOGAF certification training. Um, and TOGAF certification training is a great way to up-level your career. As we talked about, um, there's kind of a natural progression where you'll go through a career doing as a developer, where you'll grow into a team lead, maybe a, a little bit of a solution architect role. But at some point, if you want to up-level your career, you need to transition into something like enterprise architecture. And there are different skills, different ways of thinking when it comes to being an enterprise architect. Uh, TOGAF certification training is a, is a great way to uh, take that next step to move into um, an enterprise architecture career. Um, so it's really for people who want to um, actually do architecture work, who want to actually 
uh, learn how to think like an architect. Um, and 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 the qualification is is great for um, for uh, professional service providers uh, to to show that level of expertise. It's also uh, it's also good for uh, corporations to to demonstrate within your organization that you've got the the understanding and the skills necessarily necessary to be able to deliver uh, your enterprise architecture. Now, the last thing uh, that I'll mention here uh, again, we we do offer the TOGAM certification training here at Max, um, but we offer um, a couple of other classes that may be of interest to you. Um, the Introduction to Enterprise and IT Architecture um, builds on and expands on the conversation that we've had here today. That is a one-day course that will uh, basically go into a, a much, uh, not a, a lot, but a, a decent level of detail around all the different dimensions of enterprise architecture and how they fit with the rest of an IT organization. Uh, solution architecture for the practitioner really is uh, that transition point. You're, you're moving out of a, a team lead role into more of a solution architect role. This is a two-day course to actually help you understand how to be a solution architect and what are the different pieces you need to consider when you do that work. TOGAF certification gives you the broad basis for um, thinking about enterprise architecture. Um, it can be useful to a solution architect because uh, a solution architect needs to work in the context of an enterprise architecture, but it's really designed for people that want to do enterprise architecture work. Um, that is a four-day class. It does come with um, the, the TOGAF certification uh, exam vouchers, so you, you'll take the, the exam as part of that. And then the last uh, course that we have on here is actually a new industry uh, standard that's that was just launched actually here um, by the Open Group in um, in uh, late October called IT for IT, and so we're we're offering up a one day introduction to IT for IT. What IT for IT is 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 um, it's for anyone that's an IT professional, um, and it is a look at the business of IT, and it's actually uh, provides a reference architecture for the business of IT. Um, if you've worked in IT for any period of time, you probably have a good understanding that uh, in general, typically we work in silos, uh, very clear silos uh, within an IT organizations. And um, what IT for IT does is it helps us see the bigger picture. We see the entire value chain of, I, of the business of IT, how IT delivers value to the organization, and we see where we fit in context. And so it can be a really useful way to understand um, how, uh, how you contribute to the business value that your IT organization is delivering to the organization. So those are the four courses that we uh, offer here through Max uh, from a uh, CCNC perspective on the topic of, of architecture. Um, and I think uh, we will open up for some questions. And I'll hand it back to, to Kathy to explain how we're going to take some questions. Well, thank you, Mike. And thank you for that wonderful presentation. I know that it's a lot of information, and um, I'm very appreciative that you explained it so well. Everyone, at this point, we are ready to take any additional questions that you might have. Please go ahead and uh, type your questions into your GoToWebinar doc under questions, or you can type them into chat, which, whichever works for you. And while we're waiting for your questions, um, I would like to just go ahead and share some exciting promotions that we have for everybody here. Because you've attended this webinar, we do have a special promotion for attendees only. We have um, 17 courses. Well, there are 17 additional courses to the four that Mike already showed you um, that we're going to offer 20% off to you webinar attendees only. Um, if you are interested, um, all you have to do is contact us before 5 o'clock this coming Monday to reserve a seat. And we'll get that seat reserved for you at 20% off. Now, we understand that sometimes you have to go up the chain of command and you can't get a response that you're approved for it. That's fine. We're not talking about you having to pay for it right away. But if you want us to reserve that seat for you at the 20% off, please just let us know before 5 p.m. Monday the 9th. We also have a fantastic offer 
um, where you can buy any two classes on our schedule and get a third class of equal or lesser value for free. Now this offer is not limited to just those that are promoted in this webinar. They're all of our classes, everything from developer, SQL Server, we, we have so many technologies and over 500 courses. So please take a look at our website. You'll also have information in that follow-up email about that promotion. So um, the 17 classes, if you would, yeah. So here's, a, here's the list of the 17 in addition, again, to the four that Mike provided that you can get at the 20% off. So you can see we have Azure in there, we have Web Server, we have Active Directory, we have um, Windows Server, Windows Server R2, PowerShell, um, we have Exchange Server Accelerated class, Windows 10, which is a very hot, obviously, right now class, and um, Enterprise Services, Windows 10 using Enterprise Services. So just take a look at that and let us know. So I have one question it looks like. And then, yes, I have a couple more too. So how often, oh, <laughs> this question actually, Mike, is for me. How often do we, uh, do we offer the Lunch and Learn webinars? And the answer to that is this is actually the last in our series for the fall. So I think this is our sixth, maybe our seventh webinar. Um, we're going to take a break and we are right now working with all of our different instructors to put together a new webinar uh, slate and schedule for January. So thank you for that question. Now you can access the recordings and the slide decks to all of our webinars. Just go to our YouTube channel, Max Technical Training. And I do have a couple, a couple other questions. Um, okay. Let's see, this one is, do I need a tool? to do enterprise architecture? Um, great question. So um, one of the things that um, we talk in detail in the TOGAF certification um, classes, we talk about um, enterprise architecture tools, when you need them, uh, what the tool landscape looks like, and, and, and how to think about bringing a tool in. But in general, I would say you don't have to have, uh, you, you, you probably need a tool. Of, of some sort to do enterprise architecture. Now, the, the most common tool that people use for enterprise architecture in the world is actually Microsoft Office, right? So PowerPoint, Excel, um, and, and Word, maybe Visio, maybe SharePoint. Um, so that's the, that's the most widely used uh, tool for enterprise architecture. But if you are going to actually um, collaborate um, on your architectures, if you're going to work with others in your organization, if your organization has more than uh, two or three architects, um, it does behoove you to actually uh, step up into an enterprise architecture tool where you can work collaboratively on models and, and share, um, share um, your architectures um, and, and your building blocks. Uh, with each other. So I would say typically it's about three architects in an organization where you've reached that size where you ought to start looking at uh, EA tools. Uh, there are some, um, there's some open source and fairly cheap uh, enterprise architecture tools. So um, they, those can be useful even to a single architect uh, if you have that responsibility by yourself in an organization. Great. I have um, Kevin and two different Kevins here have some questions for you. Um, you mentioned in the normal path start. It's, I'm sorry. You mentioned the normal path starts in application development. Is that a necessity, or can other paths also be successful? Uh, wonderful question. Um, many other paths can can be successful to become an enterprise architect. Uh, in fact, one of the, the things that we see rather frequently is uh, people come in to that domain or segment architecture role with experience from other areas. Um, if you're going in and you're going to become a, a, a business domain architect, um, having experience with business analysis, with requirements gathering, or even coming directly from the business um, can be a wonderful way to, to step into um, a, a business domain architect at the, the enterprise level. So yeah, you, you absolutely don't have to follow that path. Um, 
I would say it's it's important that you have a variety of experiences and expertise um, if you want to if you want to be a well-rounded architect. Part of it also depends on uh, the kind of uh, architecture work you're doing. If you're doing a domain architecture role where you're focusing on, on business or information architecture specifically, uh, maybe for a particular segment of the organization, um, you may not, you, you can come into those roles without some of the broader um, expertise. If you have the responsibility for an entire segment, so say you're responsible for the entire HR architecture for a company. In that situation, typically there you really need to have business information application and technology domain understanding to be able to develop the right um, segment architecture for the HR segment. And so you need a much broader set of expertise uh, to be able to do that. Um, so it, it really just depends. Those first couple of, of levels are not, um, are not a requirement. Okay, and um, the other Kevin asks, to be successful with enterprise architecture, do you need to follow a framework? Um, my recommendation is yes. Uh, and, and the reason why I, I say that is enterprise architecture is, is about putting together an executable plan, right? If you don't have a framework that you follow, then you're, you're not bringing a lot of structure to the conversation, right? So the framework helps bring some of the structure that makes your plans executable, okay? So I think uh, a framework is important from that perspective. I think the other reason a framework is important is that the enterprise architecture job it, in and of itself is hard enough why would you want to recreate or invent how to actually do the work, right? A framework allows you to stand on the shoulders of, um, in the case of, of TOGAF, hundreds upon hundreds of companies and thousands of individuals that have been doing enterprise architecture um, worldwide for years and years and years. Uh, TOGAF has been around and in evolution for almost 25 years at this point. Um, why would you why would you throw away those kinds of um, those kinds of learnings and that kind of knowledge to create it uh, from scratch? Um, I just I wouldn't recommend it. Now, do you have to use TOGAF? Do you have to use DODAF? Do you have to use um, one of those others specifically? Not necessarily. And 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 actually, one of the things that we talk about in the TOGAF class is TOGAF is designed to be a general purpose tailorable framework. What you want to do, and, and, and I would recommend this whether you're using DODAF or FIAF or um, TOGAF or any of them, uh, Zachman's another common one, um, I would recommend you, you need to make the framework your own for your company. You, you use it as a starting point and then you have to find the right connection points of enterprise architecture to portfolio management, enterprise architecture to project management, to development. You have to find the right connection points to your organization. You have to use, you have to tailor it to, to fit the branding you want to have within the organization, the re roles and responsibilities of your organization, and, um, and the, the culture and the, the terms of your organization. So, you're not going to pick up any framework, whether it's TOGAF or DODAF or Zachman or any of them, and just simply use it out of the box. You want to get your hands dirty and figure out how you make that framework work for you and your organization effectively. But I absolutely would not start from scratch. I would use a framework, whatever framework it is, uh, to start. So we're getting a lot of more questions now, Mike. Very good. good. We have Amy here saying, are asking. She says, does the EA encompass all facets of a data center? Routers, storage, servers, databases? How is it possible to learn all of the platforms of each of these elements to be a good EA? That is um, a great question. And, and actually, I'm going to take um, just a split second since I know we're going to start to see some people drop off here. And 
um, and mention something that I didn't mention uh, previously. Um, there are three handouts for you in uh, in the WebEx. Uh, if you want to uh, have those handouts, those will not be available after the session. They're available only for you here through the WebEx. Um, or you can email me and I can send them to you directly. But go ahead and download those now. Um, one of those is, is just a little bit more about CCNC. One of those is talks about the, the business value of enterprise architecture. And then one of those actually is, is an interview with our CEO, Vishwaswanathan. Uh, and he talks about his experience on, on enterprise architecture and where EA is going over the next couple of years from an industry perspective. So that's a really interesting interview that, um, that I recommend for you. Now, to, to bring us back to this question, do you have to understand the data center? Do you have to understand all the different pieces of the data center, all the different technologies? And, and my answer there is, is no, you don't. Um, to your point, um, as an enterprise architect, there is so much that um, you could potentially need to understand. Uh, and, and, and let me rephrase that. Um, you need to have a broad level of understanding of all the different elements of your organization. You need to understand how the business works from beginning to end. You need to understand the bigger picture information and how it flows throughout your organization. You need to understand the scope of the applications within your organization. And you need to understand the broad set of technology used in your organization and all the different pieces and how they fit together and how they work. So you, you do need to have some understanding about network and servers and storage and, and all those. Do you have to have depth in, in all those? No, absolutely not. Right? As an enterprise architect, you need to understand how things fit together, how things connect, and have a good sense of who in your organization are the experts in some of those topics that can help you get to the answers you need when you when you need to, to talk in in detail. Um, I would also say that as an enterprise architect, you're going to have your sweet spots, your areas of expertise. Um, so I can tell you, I, I, I personally, I was a uh, lead cloud architect for a while. I was also an IT for IT architect. So I, I spent eight years working in the IT for IT space. I knew um, I knew all the tools that we use to deliver IT. I knew the project management system. I knew the help desk system. I knew the, um, the, the testing systems. I knew all those systems, how they fit together. Now, did I know all the systems that were used over in the supply chain? No, I knew in general the high-level systems and, and, and a little bit about how they fit together. But if, if I wanted to talk in supply chain, I'd go talk to my supply chain architect. Now, when I was in the role of cloud architect, um, that actually got a little more complex. When I was um, looking at things from a cloud perspective, I needed to understand software, platform, and infrastructure as a service. I needed to understand security. I needed to understand network. I needed to understand um, servers and storage and, and all the different elements of compute. I needed to understand what was going on uh, from a, a, a data perspective, from a uh, big data standpoint, how that was getting uh, brought into the conversation. I needed to understand how um, how different programming frameworks, Java and, and .NET and, and, and all the different programming frameworks, how those fit into the picture. And then I also needed to be able to understand how we were going to evaluate business applications as well and make decisions on whether a business application could be moved to the cloud or not. And so that particular role, I needed a much, I needed a, a deeper level of knowledge across a much bigger uh, set of stuff. I still wasn't the expert on uh, a lot of those. I wasn't the expert on security architecture. I wasn't the expert on network architecture. But I had to have a much deeper level of knowledge to do my cloud architecture work um, appropriately. So, like I said, the, the job is not for the faint of heart. Um, enterprise architecture does require a fairly deep level of knowledge. That's why in, in that career path conversation, I said uh, it takes a while to, to build up the knowledge that you need, and, and you need a broad set of experiences. You need to work in a number of different areas. Um, it, you can't just do that um, uh, uh, coming out of college. You have, to, uh, you have to work with it for a while and really build up your skills over time. So. Okay, I, um, in, to be good stewards of everyone's time, I have two more questions then for you, Mike. So 
you've got you know less than five minutes for these, but um, yep. I'm sure you'll do well. So the next question is, um, I have been told by many that I would probably be a good EA. So how does one know when you are ready, and what would be my first step once I'm there? Um, well, I, I would say. Um a, not knowing you personally, um, I will offer up. I'd be happy to, to have a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to talk in a little more detail to whoever's asking the question. Feel free to send me an email at mike at ccncsolutions.com and we can set that time up. Uh, but in general, um, I would say um, if you feel like um, you've got a fairly good set of knowledge, if you feel like the stuff that I was talking about, the, the setting strategy, working with a lot of people, connecting with a lot of people, um, doing that, uh, look forward uh, into the future state. If those kinds of things really interested you um, and, and you've got a, a decent set of experience building up, then I say it, it's probably the right time. If if you really um, love to, to, to do development, if you really love to manage projects, if you really get excited about the details, um, you may struggle with an enterprise architecture role. Um, when you talk about enterprise architecture, typically we're talking about conceptual and logical architectures. Uh, solution architecture is really where we deal with physical decisions and design decisions and so um, as an enterprise architect you inherently can't get too far down into the details so it's important to understand that because that will influence whether moving into an enterprise architecture career is a right choice for you so Very we can okay let's go to the next one yeah sorry so the last question is does TOGAF work well in conjunction with the ITIL framework Great question. So TOGAF is uh, is absolutely uh, a framework that works well with with ITIL. Um, in fact, there's actually a, a white paper if you're really interested in this topic um, on the the topic of TOGAF and ITIL overlap. Um, but if you if you are fairly knowledgeable about ITIL, you'll you you may recall the service strategy book of knowledge within ITIL. Um, enterprise architecture and TOGAF specifically outlines how to do work and some of the best practices for doing work within the context of uh, some of those pieces of service strategy. Now, service strategy is, is broader than enterprise architecture, uh, but I would say in IDLE, um, the service strategy book of knowledge is probably the, the weakest of the, the books. Um, and so enterprise architecture and TOGAF actually helps fill some of that gap. It, it actually complements IDLE fairly well when it comes to that. Um, but more details, uh, again, send me an email if you'd like to actually see that detailed white paper about TOGAF and IDLE. Uh, I'd be happy to, to look that up and send you a link to that. Again, Mike at ccncsolutions.com. Okay. Um, and anybody else, if you have more questions, Please go ahead and keep. T I'll keep the webinar open, and uh, people can drop off. But if you want to have your question answered, Mike said that he's willing to stay on. So we do have one more question here. If anybody else wants to, go ahead and ask them. And if you're dropping off, we thank you for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn webinar. Remember, you will receive an email. We're hoping to get that out to you later today with a link to the slide deck and to the recording, as well as all the promotions that we talked about. Have a great day. And for those of you Thanks staying, so. yep, thank you, Mike. So for those of you staying, I do have right here, um, Mike, can you've got the slide control. Can you post your email so people want to actually see your email address? Um, yes, I can. I can just put it in the chat. So it's mike at ccandcsolutions.com. I'm going to send that yeah. to all in the chat. Okay, um, and now the question that we have here for you. What advice do you have for a developer who wants to get into enterprise architecture but lacks opportunities in a large organization 
with a team of six to eight architects. Ah, that's a great question. That is a, a great question. Um, and and it's, it's one I, uh, I actually wish we would have uh, had earlier that we could have touched on with, with everyone because it's an important thing to note. Enterprise architecture, typically in most organizations, is a fairly small team of folks. Um, most uh, or architecture organizations, you may have as many as 100 in a, in a big Fortune 50 company, you may have as many as 100 to 150 solution architects, but you rarely have more than 20 enterprise architects. Um, there'll be a couple that, that may be bigger than that, but not, not many. As you get into some of the smaller organizations, you may only have two or three enterprise architects in your organization um, and whatnot. Um, how, how do you how do you make that shift? So I think um, the thing that I would uh, the, I'll tell you my experience. What I did was I looked for opportunities to uh, within my work within the context of my work. I looked for opportunities to start to do some EA like things uh, in in my day to day job. So I started to to engage with the team around how do we look a little further out? How do we start to plan for the future state? How do we start to think about integrations more uh, more holistically? Uh, and so I started to have some of those kind of conversations. I started to um, to talk to folks outside of my immediate organization and understand what was going on in other parts of of my organization and how that mattered from an IT landscape perspective. And then the other thing that I did was I volunteered, right? So um, you want to you wanna participate, you want to become an architect, well, introduce yourself to the architects. Talk to them, see where they need help. Uh, offer to um, potentially do an apprenticeship with, with one of them. See if you can help them develop their architectures. Um, maybe do something, uh, it may take some, some personal investment. Maybe, maybe you have to work a couple extra hours a week um, on your own time almost to, to, to go engage those architects and, and do some of that work. Um, but there are ways that you can do some of that. You can also um, get involved in some of the bigger organizations with training teams. Um, a lot of times the, the training teams in an organization don't have um, a lot of capacity and the people that are the most expert um, don't have uh, the desire to contribute. So you can volunteer for a, a training team or a competency team and help, um, help drive some of those conversations and work with the architects. So that was that was what I did. That was how I got involved. Um, the, the other thing that I did personally that may or may not work for you and your organization, it, again, it's a fairly small number of folks that could do this. Um, I actually used my um, my service management and my development expertise to take over ownership of running the enterprise architecture tool. So I built on my existing expertise to, to start to interact with enterprise architects as customers, right? Um, so that was uh, another way that I got uh, a leg into the organization and started to, to do that. So those are a few of the, a few of the ideas. Um, again, if you want to send me an email, we can set up some time. We can probably talk about some other options for you personally on how you might do that. Okay, and then um, I think our last question, it's, others have asked something similar. So we have, what is the value of a TOGAP certification? I know you, you, you talked about it in general. But sure, sure. Um, so there's a couple of things. Number one, it's the, the most widely uh, recognized uh, industry certification in the enterprise architecture space. So um, it's, a, it's a good thing from a resume perspective for, um, for um, HR to, to get your resume in the door uh, for people that aren't necessarily the hardcore enterprise architects to understand that you have enterprise architecture knowledge. Right? TOGAP, a TOGAP certification is not going to help you pass um, an interview with a chief architect. It's just not. Um, in order to be able to do that, you're going to have to have some knowledge um, and some application uh, ability to apply what you learned uh, to real-world situations, but it is going to help you 
uh, get um, get in the door uh, with with people. Um, the second uh, place specifically, I would say a TOGAF certification is useful is as an IT service provider. If you're a consultant, um, having that certification uh, puts bubbles your your name up to the top above people that don't have that. So that's a, a benefit as well. And then the third thing I would say, in general, uh, what what you get from a TOGAF certification course, not from the certification itself, but from the course, is um, you understand architecture thinking, you understand the architecture development method, and you understand the the toolbox that's available to you to go out and use um, at any point in time as you're developing your architecture. So it allows you to be more effective because you know you've got this thing in your toolbox to pull out at the right time. So that's um, that's um, that's another benefit. Uh, I can tell you from from a, a standpoint of our class specifically, um, we do actually offer a career coaching. Um, as part of our, our TOGAF certification course. So um, we'll sit down with you and talk about how, how are you going to um, make that shift into enterprise architecture and we'll coach you through that process a little bit um, as part of our class as well. That's not something you get through a typical uh, certi a TOGAF certification class though. No, thanks. And I have someone who's asked one last question, please. <laughs> is the okay. EA role is the EA role something that can be remotely um, com done, or does it require constant on-site presence? Um, good question. Um, I would say it does not require constant on-site presence, but it does require um, some on-site presence. I think um, a lot of uh, enterprise architecture is understanding the business, understanding and building the relationships with people. So I, I'm a firm believer that um, there is some benefit to that on-site uh, nature of things. Um, you do, as an enterprise architect, you work with a lot of business leaders. You tend to work with a lot of IT leaders in an organization. And in most organizations, that tends to be a good relationship to maintain face-to-face. -face. So is, um, is an enterprise architecture role something that um, you could do 100% um, work from home? Probably not. Um, or at least you wouldn't be as effective at it. Can you do a 50-50 split where I'm working from home half the time and working from the office half the time? Pretty easily. Um, can you work at a remote site for for a company? Um, I've seen I've seen that happen as well. It's it does limit your effectiveness a little bit, um, but it can be done. Uh, particularly in global companies, everybody is working in in different locations anymore, and and with all of the technologies and whatnot, um, there are always ways to to work around that. Um, so I, I'd say it's not, it, it, it can be done, it will limit your effectiveness a little bit. Um, I would recommend if you, if you are going to be in that situation, you take heavy use of one-on-one um, -on -one conversations, you take heavy use of video um, in conversations and in meetings, but it can be done. I think we're done. Very good, Mike. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And thank you. Yes, and thank you to everybody. Um, look for Great that questions. email. Yeah, very good questions and a very good presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good day.